Charlie Long. Giving all praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, Yahweh Now a fun call, Halal Yom, La Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, Yahweh Shalom to the hopeful elect out there. And I'm going to entitle this video. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh This is from Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. And I saw thrones, which is the kingdom, and they sat upon them. The, the ones that will sit upon these thrones in the kingdom of heaven, the future kingdom, are the elect of Israel, starting with the 12 apostles. Within that, you have the 144,000. You have the, multi, the great multitude behind them among men because only men will be sitting on thrones. But among the elect, you have women that are among the elect. You have children that are among the elect, which represents the families of the men. And I saw, you know, families, your, your whole family, you know. It could be your mother, could be your wife, could be your children. And I saw thrones. So John saw the kingdom. Now, before he saw that, he saw the image. When you come up up here, and we did we did a complete breakdown interpretation of Revelation twenty. You can look for it. I did it, or some other apostle or bishop or elder had did it. If you can't find it, we may just do another complete uh, breakdown on this particular chapter. But um, in a nutshell, it speaks about uh, the thousand year reign. Well, I'm not, not the well, the thousand years that East, that the devil, the serpent, the devil, Satan, thousand years, which, which is really more than a thousand years. But that point starts at uh, you know, 325 uh, AD to going into to the mid to late 1300s AD. But it really started before that. Because Jake started to take over the Roman uh, rulership, the empire really in around 96, 97 AD. You have certain guys, well, you got one particular guy that says uh, the first Jake that took over Rome was uh, September Severius in uh, 193 AD. That's not true. The first Jake to sit up on the throne as a, as a uh, emperor of Rome, and remember you had two, you had the Western Empire and you had the Eastern Empire. The Western Empire fell. That was ruled by Esau. And the Eastern Empire was ruled by Jake. That was a prominent empire. And that was before, uh, long before Constantine came on the scene. You have a time period called uh, the medieval times or the dark ages. That was during the time period. This this was uh, what is it uh, from five from about five hundred A.D. going into fifteen hundred uh, A.D. When you look that up, you go to Google. I did videos on that in the past. It's when you look up Middle Ages or Dark Ages. Pretty much they tell you that, uh, well, that was a time that nothing really was happening. Yeah, nothing really was happening with them. They were on the bottom and we were on the top. We were sitting up on thrones. We were the judges. We were the one that led you in the court. That's why you lead us in the court, 
today. You know, Jake getting shot by police in the back and all that, and they ran down the street, and they, oh, I thought he had a gun. I thought the cell phone was a gun. You know, he had a, a Coca-Cola in his hand, and I thought it was a knife. Well, that's vengeance as to what you that, what we did to them. Because we were fucking them up, and we were getting away with it. And we're going to fuck them up again in the kingdom, and we're going get to away, get away with it. It says, uh, so the so the dark ages or the middle ages represent the time that we were ruling. And really it started around 96, 97 AD. The first Jake that sat on the throne in the Roman Empire was, uh, he came after Domitian. We always go through this, a man by the name of Nerva. And Nerva, if I'm not mistaken, was cons considered one of the five good emperors. I believe Hadrian was one. Um, I, I know uh, what's this guy, uh, Commodus' father, which is a uh, uh, damn um, Marcus Aurelius, which when you go to the, watch the movie uh, Gladiator, they show the, the, the emperor. That was a Jake. His son, that he was a Jake. Now the guy that played the Spaniard, that he never existed. They put they added him into the movie. So that was loosely based off of that history. Cause the guy at the end of the movie the, that killed a Commodus, that didn't happen. He didn't kill him in the arena. That didn't happen. It was a wrestler that they had to put him in the choke hole and choke him out. And his sister was behind it. Commodus' sister was behind it because he was wicked as hell. He was a he was an Epicurean. You have a, a difference between a Stoic and an Epicurean. Stoics are disciplinarians. They live a hard life, even though they have riches. They live a hard Stoic life. You got certain people that are hit the lotto and they'll live an easy life. You got some people that are just built that way. They like living a hard life. And Commodus' father lived a hard life. And there's, if you go to Commodus' quotes, he, he, he made a lot of quotes that people, like certain Edomite, Edomites and um, politics and corporations, CEOs, they'll they'll study his quotes as a stoic. So it says, uh, and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till a thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loose a little season. That little, little season represents 500, 500 some odd years. He's still in his little season, but he's going down. He's at his little season. He's at the end of his little season. The little season started when they started taking down Jake, when the Turks, when the Turks uh, sacked uh, uh, Constantinople or Byzantium. It was called at one time. Now it's called Istanbul, Turkey, and that's when they. Um, the, Span the Spanish Edomites took down the Moors, which were Israelites. So we were all taken down at the same time, which proves that the, the Moors are actually Israelites. See, these Jake's, you know, they're following a noble Jew, Drew Ali, going back into the ancient history of the Moors. The Moors were all Israelites. They were not Moabites. If you teach that you are the Moabites, then you're putting a curse on yourself. And Moabites were always enemies to the Israelites. So, I mean, if you are actually Moabites, guess what? You're going into captivity. The Moors are going into captivity under the Israelites. So you better get out of that nonsense. You better take the laws and the principles of the Moors and start labeling yourself Israelites. 
Well, let's have a let's have a Lord Abba. Let's have a, 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 a debate. We don't have debates. We're we're beyond debates right now. Okay. If you're being chased down by a bunch of Edomites that's going to kill you and there's two of you and you're debating whether you're going to go this way or that way, I'm going to leave your ass. I'm going my way. Fuck you, nigga. We ain't trying to make you to get this because we've been doing this for years. So we don't got to go on Sarnetta. We ain't teaching Sarnetta, Sarnetta a goddamn thing, brother. Because one day he's an Israelite, he's a Hebrew. The next day he's a Hamite talking shit about us. And uh, Captain Zarek, you ain't got no goddamn business dealing with that dude. Kyle. Well, I respect him. I love Sarnetta. Why in the fuck you gonna love somebody that's teaching that you teach a man Israelite? You walk down the street to the store and he's saying, Yeah, you, you a Kemite. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be in the same fucking, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to breathe the same air as that nigga, man. So it says in cast him into the bottom of the pen. Uh, so this is what I wanted. This is what I wanted. Revelation 2, verse 4. And I saw thrones and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded, beheaded. This is talking about now. Because because this is the penalty if you do not take the the karagma, these clowns, these Israelite clowns out there, these fake Israelites, they're saying, oh, it's Christianity. Christianity? Are you out your damn mind? Ain't no Christianity. But they play, they change it up. It's an embargo. It's Christianity. It's just not referring to people. It's, it's referring to uh, nations and countries. But when you look those words up, when you look up, uh, when you look up Mark, it's a physical thing. The root word is karax. It's a physical thing. The root word for karax is grapho, which is a physical thing. When you look up the word hand, it's a physical thing. The word, I believe, is dextrose. A matter of fact, it is dextrose. And, and the forehead, which dextrose, this is where you get the term dexterity. You know, your dexterity means you're working something with your hands. You're using your hands to work something. But the actual Greek, trans, the translation goes into the word right hand as opposed to the left hand. Now, on the other side of the pond, they're getting it on the left hand. But guess what? They drive on the, uh, the right hand side. You know their cars are on it on it on the opposite side, so everything is on the uh, the other end. So that's why they get it on the on the left hand. But but it says, uh, you know, left hand, right hand, butt cheek, which I'm joking about that. It's an inside joke, and forehead. Now the word forehead means just that. It's from the it's from the the Greek for forehead, uh, the, the Greek word is metopon. What's in the word metopon? Meta. You have, you went from, uh, uh, what's this guy? Zuckerberg, whatever his name is. He went from uh, Facebook. He changed it to metopon and it's dealing with the, uh, the virtual world where you put these goggles on. You, the, the, the goggles that you put on covers both your eyes and part of your forehead. And it's called the metaverse. Meta, meto, metopon, forehead. But ultimately, they're going to put a karagma in your forehead. But most people probably get it in their hand. So they can transact, go to the medical uh, doctor, medical records, and so forth, right? So it says that he should deceive, I'm sorry, and saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai and for the word of Yah of the Lord, the Most High. Which, and that's what we're doing. We're witnessing in the name of Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai comes in the volume of the book and is spoken to him. And then it goes on to say the word, if you don't understand what it means by Yahweh Shai. 
because everything we know about this truth is from the, from the book, which is the comforter. The comforter is not just the book because the Edomite can open up the Bible and read it. That doesn't mean they have the comforter. The comforter is a spirit that comes with the book. See, when the apostle Paul came on the scene, the Lord, that's in Galatians 1, the Lord actually came to him in the spirit and supped with him and showed him things. That's why Peter said that Paul was deep because the, the Lord, Yahweh Shai, was dealing with him in the spirit. He was coming to him and, and showing him things. And, that, and a lot of those things were going over uh, people's heads. That's what Peter spoke about. Read that in 2 Peter, the third chapter, around about the 15th verse on down. It says, and, and for, the, for the word, which is the scriptures, which includes the Apocrypha of the Most High, and which had not worshipped the beast, which a lot of these guys, they'll say, well, the mark of the beast is this, and it's not that, and it's not the way GMS. A lot of them couldn't even tell you what the beast is. Neither his image, a lot of them can't tell you what the image is. Like Bishop Nathaniel, he constantly teaches that the image of the beast is a picture of Caesar Bogier. That doesn't make no sense. That's not sound doctrine. The scriptures speak about sound doctrine. Neither had received his karagma. Karagma is a physical thing. It's mentioned about four, uh, five or six times or more, give or take, in the book of Revelation. The only other time is mentioned outside of that is uh, the book of Acts 17 and 29. And Paul describes the karagma as a graving, graving tool of man's hands, a, a art of man's device. They call it an artisan. Look that word up, an artisan. Anybody that makes stuff by, by hand, they make bread or cakes or by scratch, or they take a stone and they make it into a statue or, or a Jesus piece or whatever. The person that does this is an artisan, a craftsman. He uses a cutting tool, but he cuts into gold, silver, wood, uh, different metals, inferior metals, uh, what else? Uh, a stone, stone, your statues. When you go to parks and you see statues of different Edomites out there, somebody crafted it by hand, an artisan. So they use a, uh, they use a, uh, a tool to do that. So that goes hand in hand with the word mark, which is gravening to, which is the word karagma, upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with the house shy a thousand years. So what I wanted was, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded, that were beheaded. Their head got chopped off, guillotine style for the witness of Yahushua. Now, did that happen to, now that happened to Paul. Now, Peter, he was, he was crucified upside down. And that was considered, considered a heinous way to be executed because it was, you died slow, a slow agonizing death. Uh, getting your head chopped off in the Roman Empire, ancient Roman Empire, 2,000 years ago or more, that was considered a, a more, um, how can I say, honorable way to die. So why did Paul get his head chopped off in the history? He got his head chopped off because he was a Roman citizen. So they said, well, we can't, we can't make him die a slow, agonizing death. We're going to give him a quick death because we honor in the fact that he's a Roman citizen. So you get perks being a Roman citizen, but he still got his head chopped off. Now, the reason why he got his head chopped off was because he was guilt found guilty of sedition. Look up the word sedition. Peter was also found guilty of sedition. All of the rest of the 12 and the other martyrs, they died for they were guilty of sedition. When you go into the history, they told Paul, you're guilty and you ought to come back next month to, to face the sword. You're going to be going to get your head chopped off. 
and they and they had him staying in an apartment and the other saints just going to the to history it's not in the scriptures the other he he was um he was under uh what do you call that house arrest they said you're going to stay in this apartment which he was living in and he said you can't leave you know you got to stay there you know now they give you these bracelets and whatnot right and the saints would come and give him food, uh, pursuant to the history. And then on the day of uh, the execution, he got up and he went. He went himself. And he went before the authorities and he said, I'm ready to. Uh, that's why he made the statement. Let me, let me see this. Let me say this. Let me say this here. Let me, let me look, check this out. Check this out. So now you understand why he said what he said. But the main, the main part, of, the main thing I want to get at is that if if you don't, it's gonna be, it's gonna be serious, man. We're gonna see who's really a saint of the Most High. We're gonna see who's really of the elect, because some of you, you know, when this thing comes out, when this karagma comes out, when these karagma stations are set up, just like the jump shot, they're not gonna say, well, look, if you get this, you're gonna get a free cheeseburger, or you're gonna get Knicks tickets. For five games, or you gonna get a, you can win the lotto. We'll give you a hundred ticket tickets on the New York lotto, and you may just win. And it's free. Well, guess what? The Karagma is gonna be free too, unless you're stupid enough to pay for it. So it's gonna, so so that jump shot was put out there as really a test. First of all, those the, the pharmaceutical the pharmaceutical companies and these doctors and these hospitals, they became a lot more richer. And who benefited from uh, this whole thing, this whole fiasco? The big, the super rich. They're the only ones. That, the, the middle class, they, they lost. They lost big time. Because they had stores closing and you couldn't come in at certain hours then they let them open and uh limited hours but then but then you had the box the big box stores and you had amazon and you had because because everything is uh amazon is delivered to you you know the, hey, the same thing with the the food and all that so the ones that benefited from this whole thing that happened talking really 20 2020, 2021, 2022 even. Had your ass locked down and shit. So they're going to do, so that's a test. They became rich, you know, and that was also a test. And they know that there's going to be certain people that are going to push back. So they're going to have something for you. The ones of you that push back, they're planning on getting rid of some of y'all. They're going to lock some of y'all up pursuant to uh, Revelation uh, 210. And I, I was going to read that. I may read it, but I'll, I'll, let's see. It said, be faithful unto death and I will give you a crown of life, right? Give me a second. Give me a second. Here.
please forgive me. I'm back. Okay. I read this again. And I saw thrones and and they sat upon them. That's the elect. And judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them <clears throat> that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh and for the word of the Most High and which had not worshipped the beast. This is talking, this is getting ready to happen. Neither his image. How do you know that this is not talking about the uh, ancient Roman Empire? Because they were already beheaded. In the case of John, the apostle, he was sentenced to the Isle of Patmos, which, which was an island off of uh, the coast of Greece. You can look it up. Because remember, the Romans had one of the provinces was Greek, was Greece. So uh, the apostle Peter was already dead. Uh, the apostle Paul was already dead. The rest of the apostles apostles were already dead but the one apostle that remained the lone apostle was John and why did he remain because the most high worked on the minds of the Romans not to put him to death because he had to use him as a vessel to give him the last book of the scriptures which is the book of revelation which just simply means to read meaning to back pull back go back back and veil means to pull back the veil like on the prices, right? You know, you got door number one, door number two, door number three. You can get door number, which door do you pick? Uh, door number one. So the Monty Hall, whatever his name is, he would say, well, I'll give you a thousand, back then a thousand dollars, like ten thousand dollars. I'll give you a thousand dollars. If you, you get this thousand dollars, but you don't get anything behind those curtains. Or you can get a brand new car, depending on what you pick. So I'm going to go. I got a good feeling. I'm going to go with curtain number one. They pull up curtain number one. It's a donkey. <laughs> so it would reveal what was behind door number one. Now, if you would have picked door number two, you would have got a new car. And back then, a car was like $2,000, a brand new car. Gave you like a compact. Two, this is 2000 you know. A 1979 blase, blase. Uh, so it says, I saw the, the souls of them bed and the witness of the month, Yahweh Shai. And we're witnesses of Yahweh Shai. Christians are not witnesses of Yahweh Shai. Christians are witnesses of Jesus. And for the word of the Most High, which is the Bible, and which had not worshiped the beast. In other words, there's going to come a time where, and it happened, we're talking about a year and a half, two years ago, there's going to come a time where, uh, you know, if you're working as a police officer, you got to get it, or you got to get off the force. And that's what happened in New York and, and around the country. They put a big, they put a lot of pressure on the military, the different branches of the military, that you had to get it. And if you don't get it, you're going to get, you know, court-martialed. Uh, you're going to be, uh, what's the term? Um, uh, on, on dishonorably, dishonorably discharged. You had people that work for EMS. They had to take it. You had people that work for uh, the, uh, the fire departments and certain jobs. And then it came to a point where Pretty much any job that you worked, it was in, in the private sector. These pi private jobs, as opposed to these public jobs, these, uh, you know, these city jobs, these governmental jobs, everybody had to get it. And the, and the threat was, you're going to lose your job. So people said, I don't lose my job. I'm going to lose my benefits and all that. So I'm going to stick with, I'm going to go ahead and take it. And there was a lot of examples of individuals that took it. Now, for the record, 
No, no one in GMS took it. We had one group that one of the brothers came up. They have an Israelite group, but they're cool with us. So pretty much they're in the spirit of GMS. And one of the brothers came out. I didn't see the rest of them brothers. So I guess they'll be up here for a while. But the brother saluted us. He was out there with us. And a couple other brothers was out there too. We had about like four brothers out there. And so we found out that them guys moved down, all of them, the whole camp moved down to, to Georgia because they didn't want to get the uh, paragma. So now it was asked to me, should we take it? You know, the men in New York camp, and I said, no, don't take it. Well, I got a job. I said, well, you know what? Fuck that job. Now, you had certain people in the uh, IUIC. Now, I don't know about ISUPK. I know what General Johannes said. And you watch my recent videos on um, um, Odyssey that this guy comes and says, you got you to gotta take it, that you got to take it. It's going to help you. In the case of uh, Bishop Nathaniel, at first, he was kind of neutral about it. Then when he saw the video with the nurse, the Jake nurse that had, that suffered Bell's, Bell palsy or Bell syndrome, whatever it's called, he said, man, I ain't taking that shit. But, but he did make a, finally make a statement not to take it. I watched the video. It was a short. He made the statement, don't, don't take it. But a lot of them already took it because we know an individual that worked on the same job as a man in our camp the man said, should I take it though? I said, nope, I wouldn't take that shit. Fuck it, fuck it. So he told the people, no, nah, I'm not going to take it. He said, you're going to lose your job. He said, hey, kick me off the job. He wound up keeping the job. There was another man, I believe he was a management position in that particular job, but he's from IUIC. So they know, knew each other. He knew he was from GMS and he knew he was from IUIC. And the IUIC guy took it and now he feels like shit. He feels like shit, but he didn't know because at that time the leadership of the IUIC didn't tell him not to take it. And then Bishop Nathaniel, uh, the 20, and you can, you can look it up. You, you can look it up for yourself. I'm almost per, uh, positive it's on this video of uh, the 2022 uh, IUIC Passover. And he says, uh, he says that he said the past year, he said 20, I believe it was either 20 or 22 people had died from the C-19. Now, when I heard that, I said, I guarantee you, they all took the uh, the jump shot because it's the jump shot that, that, that messed them up because he didn't tell them in time. The scriptures, in Ezekiel, the scriptures tell you about warning them. But once you warn them and they go ahead and do it, then the blood is off your hand. So what is the main thing that we're pushing right now about this uh, concerning, uh, this is the, uh, the karagma. You know, the karax, the karagma, whatever you want to call it. The real jump shot. <laughs> the three-pointer. You know? Or in the big three, the big three, uh, the four-pointer. You only get the four-pointer. It says, uh, if y'all watch the big three, it was a great concept, a mental, a great concept, uh, which was uh, this guy was behind it, uh, Ice, uh, Ice Cube. Really, really, that's better than uh, NBA because it's high, fast, faster pace. Because you're playing half court ball. It says neither his neither his image, like I said, the image is not a picture. Caesar Bogier. So Bishop Nathan, you should stop teaching that bullshit. It's not no, don't come out with, you see, this is the first sketches of uh, uh, Leonardo DiCap, the, uh, <laughs> Leonardo da Vinci, I always say DiCaprio. Leonardo uh, da Vinci, these are the first sketches of Caesar Bogier. <clears throat> no, that's not talking about that. The image is the ancient, the way, the, uh, the politics the Roman system being played out in this system, which is uh, the US uh, and, and the NATO nations and the EU nations. Uh, neither had received his 
mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. It said in their hands. So it could be, if you're living in Sweden, it could be your le- it'll be your left hand. If you're living in the States, it'll be your right hand. And they lived and reigned with uh, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach a thousand years. But our reign is going to be forever. But, but the first thousand years, we're going to be, you know, sitting on them thrones. But after the thousand years, we're going to be sitting on them thrones. But it's going to be under Yahweh Shai HaMashiach as it is the first thousand years. So this kingdom is going to be an everlasting kingdom. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. So the first ones that are going to make it are the ones that didn't take that karagma. The, the, the ones of you that took it when, it's, when the destruction comes, when, it, when the Lord and the angel come, you're going to die because they're going to know that you took the the, the, the karagma. They're gonna they're gonna see it. That's a great, that's also the great sifting. So we're gonna see all these different men out here on the highways and the byways doing these videos, all these different camps just popping up. Sons of the most high. Um keepers of the right way. Oh, I'm just making these names up. Followers, Israelites, followers of the of the Messiah. You know all these different names. They get the twelve tribe sign up, can sign out. They can't break it down. They got the fringes on with the t-shirts. You got a lot of young guys. You got little kids. You got little eight year old kids holding posts. <laughs> and you got certain individuals that pop up and ask them questions and stump them because they don't understand. And among these different various groups, most of them, I'll say the majority of them, except for a few, they all going by what General Yohan is saying and what Bishop Nathaniel is saying, that the karagma is you know, Christianity and is an embargo. So when it comes down to uh, actually, if they give you an actual, which, which Bishop Nate is saying, he's speaking about a digital system and he's speaking about a uh, a, a micro hip, but it has nothing to do with the. It has nothing to do with the. You know, Revelation thirteen and sixteen. Oh, okay. So you see it right now, but you 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 trying to bring it out piecemeal. All right. So let me go from here to. So this is going to be the ultimate test, Revelation three ten. They're going to be the, the time, the great, the great time of testing. So now let me check something out. Let me do this. Because they're planning on bringing back the guillotines. I'm going to read some articles on the guillotines. So in the NLT, New Living Translation, Revelation 20, verse 4, then I saw thrones and the people sitting on them had been given the authority to judge and I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded how are you beheaded by a sword or a a guillotine for their testimony about the Lord and for the proclaiming the word of the most high when we go out there and teach we'll make statements and we'll go to the scriptures give give me the precept on that they had not worshipped the beast. They were not, and worshiping the beast doesn't mean, when you look the word worship up, it means to bow down before a higher lord, a captain, a general, you know, kiss the Pope's ring. Worship can also mean that you're part of a, a, uh, a certain order. You know, when you salute, when you salute somebody, you're in the military, you salute somebody, you, the lower rank guy salutes the the higher rank guy, and then the higher rank guy salutes the lower rank guy back. So that's a low level of re, uh, worship. You worship, and then some. Sometimes you idolize certain generals and so forth. You know, like they idolize uh, uh, the Desert Fox, uh, Erwin Rommel, which he was a general over Germany's army. 
during the time period of uh, of uh, George S. Pat Patton, and a lot of people idolize him. You know. So when you are st stay in the army, you have to be a part of that system. You got to bow down to the hierarchy by saluting them. You know, the police, you have the sergeants, you have lieutenants. In the nursing field, you know, you got to do certain things and certain, jo certain jobs that you, certain public jobs, governmental jobs, do you know you got to take an oath? So when you take an oath, that's a form of, of worship. When you, when you take an oath, that means you promise to do what they tell you to do. That's a form of worship. So that's what that means. Uh, the beast, which is the system, and his, and his statue. Well, wait a minute, Bishop Nate. It doesn't say image, it says statue. So there's somebody going to build up a statue that you got to bow down to. And this is what this clown, Barack from the IU, uh, the HODC said. When Barack Obama was the president, he said that that's the Antichrist. And I did a counter video to that. He said, that's the Antichrist. But then Obama came and went, right? Eight years in, and he, and he went. He's, he's about his business, right? Very seldom do you even hear the name Obama. They'll bring him out certain times here and there, do interviews with him. But he ain't, he ain't running shit. He ain't in... Uh, public office no more. So uh, Trump came into office. So this so this guy uh, um, uh, it was a Barack from the HODC, the head of the HODC. He said that uh, he didn't say that Trump was a was an antichrist. He said that they're going to build a they're going to build a, a statue to Trump and everybody's going to have to bow to it. How stupid and ridiculous is that? That's why not, nobody follows those guys. Uh, so let me see. Uh, Worship the beast and the statue and the and the, and the word statue in in the King James is image, and image means the system. It means the system. Nor except his that the word there is karagma, which is a physical thing. It's not Christianity. It's not an embargo. Anybody that's teaching that, the most High is not dealing with you. Or maybe you know, but you got a bag. It says on their foreheads or in their hands. And it's happening now. Put um, um, micro hip and put in Sweden. There's, there's, I think there's like maybe more over 10,000 people that, that, that do it. They all came to life again. What does that mean? They all came to life again. That this is the Roman Empire all over again. So the statue is what? It is really the Roman Empire. And this is the Roman Empire all over again, which is not called the Roman Empire. But the EU was established by the treaty at Rome. Look that up. And we spoke about that yesterday on the streets. And they reign with the Messiah for a thousand years. But we're going to reign forever. We're going to be on top forever. So now let's go from here to uh, Revelation 2. Ten. So the people that you work with, your friends, the people that you know in the world, they're going to all take it because you know why? Because they want to stay in the system. They want to be able to buy buy and sell. Oh, and by the way, buy and sell in Revelation 13, it, it actually, when you look those words up, it actually means to buy, to make a pur purchase. And sell also means to make a pur purpose, a purchase, a purchase. And these different camps are teaching you that the that the that that the the mark is already here and people got it, but guess but but wait a minute you don't got it you saying we ain't got it because we ain't into Christianity and we ain't sinning but you can still buy and sell how the hell can you buy and sell when you ain't got it because you admitted that it's already here it's not here on a on a world level yet 
And they're going to have something for your ass. If you don't take it, they're going to put certain of you to death. They're going to lock some of you up to scare you. And then some of you are going to actually get put to death pursuant to uh, Revelation 20, verse 4. So you're going to see how quick these brothers do, you know, <laughs> you know, give up that Israel thing. They said, look, we ain't dying. And we ain't going to starve to death. My, my babies ain't going to starve. All right? Oh, my wife, she took it. So I might as well go ahead. A lot of these guys are gonna, gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna fall like a deck of cards, man. So, so the oh, this is the ultimate test. The great time of testing, Revelation three verse ten. I always bring that out. When you go to the NLT, it says the great time of of testing. And K, the KJV it says the hour of temptation, but it actually means, and when you look up the word hour, it means a time. It means a time. The great time of testing. Because who's going to test you the most high to see if you're going to take it or not? So the ones of you that don't know that that's you taking it as a fulfillment of revelation, you're going to go ahead and take it. And, and, and like I said, I said, I've been saying this for years. When, is it, when it actually comes out and they set up them stage, stations like they did for the jump shot, a lot of you Israelite, different Israelite groups, you're going to bug the fuck out. You, you're not going to know what to do. And then you're going, you're going to flock to the GMS. But if you're not of the elect and you flock to us, you're still going to go ahead and take it. You're going to flock to us with the, with the thing in your hand. What do we do now? What do we do now? I said, what's that bump on your hand? Oh, that's a mosquito bite. Oh, well, Really? Why is pus coming out from it? Pursuant to uh, Revelation 16, verse 2. And, and see, this man, this, this man, he's going to have to, he's going to have to scare you into taking it, deceive you into taking it. He can't force it on you. He can't hold you down and force it on you. And some of them might just do that. Those are the people that are not the elect anyway. But he's going to give you an ultimatum. If you don't take it, we're going to lock you up. Because that's what we were talking about with the jump shot. See, this subject keeps getting, you know, uh, um, brought up. It says, don't be afraid. This is the NLT. Don't be afraid of what you are about to suffer. The devil, we know who the devil is. Will And, and by the way, the word devil means a false accuser, slanderer. They're saying that we're not the people. So that's slander. We'll throw some of you into prison to test you. You will suffer for 10 days, but if you remain faithful, even when facing death, I will give you the crown of life. If you remain, but if you remain faithful, even when facing death, I will give, so some of you are going to be put to death. I will give you the crown of life. So if you're not a part of the elect, and you, and they tell you, well, if you don't take it, we're going to put you to death. Then you're going to go ahead and take it. But guess what? The elect, they're not going to take it. You know what they're going to say? They're going to say, well, I'll choose death. Did not Paul choose death? Was not Paul under house arrest? And on the day of his uh, execution, did not he physically go before the authorities? And he put his head down and he, and he let them, and he let them without out any, um, he, he didn't fight him. He just accepted it. And I'm going to read that too. Because he told, he told the church members that he, he's going to, he did his work and now he's going to depart. I Meaning he's going to go to the spiritual realm. And don't worry about death. If they put some of you to death, take, accept death. Accept death. Because you, guess what? You're going to go into the spiritual realm and then you're going, and you're going to be the first to be raised uh, before the ones that are alive. So guess what? There's going to be some of us that's not going to take it, that's going to still be alive. There's going to be certain ways where we're not, we're going to get around the system and not take it and be fed, Isaiah 65, start from the ninth verse on down. But some of you is going, going to have to get your head chopped off. And ye which remain shall be taken up with them. You shall meet them in the air. And so forever, for, so ever will be with the Lord. So 
that's why going back to uh, Revelation 3.10, the great testing. Matter of fact, let me go to that. Let me go to that and read it in NLT. And you, other camps that are teaching that, it's not, you know, actual this. And when it, when it comes, you're going to take it. Because you want to eat and your, and your, and your family got to eat. So I'm reading this in NLT. Because you have obeyed my command to persevere. Look that word up. I will protect you from the great time of testing. The great time of testing is when they push that uh, karakma on you. That will come upon the whole world. World here is oikomeni. To test those who belong to this world to test those that belong to this world because who's going to fail the test the ones of you that belong belong to this world the one which are not written in the lamb's book of life let me look at let, let me look at that First the book of life, Psalms 69, verse 28. Erase their names from the book of life. Don't let them be counted among the righteous. <laughs> and it's talking about the, uh, the, uh, the Israelites that are not a part of the elect. Erase their names from the book of life. Don't let them be counted among the righteous, the elect. Revelation 3, verse 5. All who are victorious will be clothed in white. Revelation 7 and 9. I will never erase their names from the book of life. Whose names are not going to be erased from the book of life? The elect of Israel. So there, are there Israelites that's not written in the book of life? Absolutely. The ones that are originally written in the book of life. They're going to be erased. These are Israelites. But I will announce before my father and his angels that they are mine. The elect are his. Revelation 13 and 8. You see what that says. And all the people who belong to this world worship. And you know what? These people that came into Israel going back to the 1992 Israel, the one Westerns and all that, that came into this thing, different periods of time, and they fell off, guess what? They, their names was erased from the Book of Life, which means their names were really never written in the Book of Life. Because it says, written in the Book of Life from the foundation of the world. So those are the Israelites that are the unbelievers, the non-elect. So you're going to be tested, man. The ultimate test is if you do not take it, you're going to chop your head off. So you're going to say, chop my head off. And all the people who belong to this world worship the beast. Love not the world, neither the things that are the world. If you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. So he's not going to guide you. In uh, Second Ezra 16, it says, the, and the Lord will guide you. I'm paraphrasing. They are, the, they are the ones. They are the ones whose names were not written in the book of life. Now, you got Asaph of the IUIC bishop, whatever his title is, Deacon Asaph, or whatever his title is. He did one video where he says, if you're part of the IUIC and you leave and you still go out there and teach or you join another camp, he said, your name is going to be written out of the book, taken out of the book of life. Even if you teach, what, what a, where the hell did he get that from? 
Now that's very deceptive of you. That, that's not sound doctrine. You don't know who you don't know who's in the book of life or not. The scriptures say, "He that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved." This is why we call ourselves the hopefully elect. Because if we have a change of heart and we go back into the world, we were never part of him from the beginning. There was men that put in many years, 20 years, you know, eight years, 10 years, five years, were diligent, and then they fell off. Well, you were never part of him anyway. So the ultimate test is the ultimate test before the destruction comes, before the kingdom comes, is the great time of testing. And if you fail that test, you're going to die on this side. But then you're going to have to come back in the kingdom as newborn babies. So ultimately, you're going to be all right anyway. Either way, if you don't take it, Esau's plan on chopping your head off. And if you do take it, take it you're going, the most I'm going to kill you. He's going, he going to set you on fire. They are the ones whose names were not written in the book of life before the world was made. So the, the elect was already established before the world, before the world was put together. The book that belong, belongs to the Lamb, which is Yahweh Shai, who was slaughtered. Let's get some more. I'm gonna read the middle of this, uh, Revelation 17 and 8. And the people who belong to, to this world, love not the world, right? Whose, whose names were not written in the book of life before the, before the world was made, will be amazed at the appearance of, his, of this beast who had died, which is the Roman Empire that came back. And see, people can't equate this system to the Roman Empire because they don't call itself the Roman Empire. Call itself America, NATO, NATO and the EU. Revelation 20, verse 12. I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before the, the Most High's throne, and the books were open, including the Book of Life, and the dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. So now Esau has already been, been judged, so he's going to get, he's going to get the punishment, the uh, penalty. When we go out there and we teach teach what's, what's going to happen to them and what's going to happen to us. That's the judgment, man. It says, and, and anyone whose name was not recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Now that's, that's a poetic for the lake of fire is Babylon the Great, which is the U.S. And it's going to be, it's going to be set on fire by the lasers from the ships and the, the powerful lasers from the ships and the ICBM missiles, the Most High's army, one of the Most High's army in Joel 2. It said, nothing evil, uh, 21 verse 27, nothing evil will be allowed to enter or anyone who practices shameful idolatry and dishonesty, dishonesty but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Let me read uh, Revelation, 30, uh, Revelation 22, verse 19. I should have started the 18th verse. And if anyone remove any of the words from this book, meaning what? If you go to a scripture and somebody says, what does it mean? And it means this, and you say it means something else, you just remove a uh, word from the book. The most I remove that person's share in the, in the tree of life and in the holy city that are described in this book. But you're going to die on this side, but you will come back as newborn babies. You're going to have to start all over again. Okay, let me do this. Let me get ready to close. I'm going to do this quick. So I put in U.S. government order, it should be orders, guillotines. 
I'm not, I was going to read them, but U.S. government purchase, purchase order. When you read this, it should talk about guillotines, right? You have a fact check claim uh, stating U.S. Uh, bought 30,000 guillotines is fake. And when you click on these, they're not going to even come up. I tried it. 2016 ex, uh, executive orders signed by Barack, o, Barack Obama. Now, if you can get this up, I believe it tells you about the guillotine, right? Same with this. You click this, is you're going to get like a black page or PDF. Okay, let's try this one. I didn't click on this one. Uh, it says, uh, did the U.S. government really buy 30,000 guillotines? I believe that was bigger than news. Um, I believe it was 2016, if I'm not mistaken. I should say it. It said, should the U.S., use the guillotine to execute the condemned. Some have suggested that doing this uh, publicly would lead to the end of the death penalty as it would be too gruesome for the public to stand. That's all I'm going to read on that. And see, they plan on do it, but we're going to see what's going to happen because they can use your organs. When you use lethal injection, you, you, uh, you, you destroy the organs. It says here, Obama purchased guillotines. Let's see, let's see what it says. Let's see if it even pops up. See? It ain't going to pop up. They didn't allow you to get it. So they're hiding something. Why did the U.S. government really recently pur purchase, it says, guillotines? Let's see if, if it even pops up. So it mentions the guillotine, but it's all, I'm not even going to read it. Let's try this one. U.S. soldier exposes U.S.A. FEMA camps, 30,000 guillotines. Secret camps and guillotines groups make birthers look sane. So, so you bring this out, they'll say these people are crazy. You listen to them crazy people for. Let's see what this is all about. See, see all this bullshit here? New proof, U.S. soldier. Let me do this. New proof, U.S. soldier exposes USA FEMA camp, uh, camp guillotines are purchased by the government. Let's try this one, try a few more.
So you get a lot of uh, advert advertisements. They ain't getting nothing because they hide it. Now, I remember you used to be able to pull up these articles. I believe that was 2016, if I'm not mistaken. Uh-oh, uh-oh, wait a minute. Canadian government, which is part of NATO, ordering hydraulic guillotines. November 16, 2020, get some rebel gear. Let me, let me click on this. And this is a video. Oh, this is this is YouTube, by the way. You're gonna watch this later. This was put up two years ago. Canadian government ordering hydraulic guillotines. Why do you think they're gonna do that? So I'm going to watch this later. As a matter of fact, you know what I'm going to do? Canadian government ordering hydraulic guillotines put up by Rebel News. If I remember, I'll put it in the description box. Bear me for a minute. Okay, let me do this. Let me put this right here. So I can watch it later. Anyway, I don't got to go there anymore. Okay, with that, I'm going to say uh, shallow one.